Hello, everybody. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, December 10th. Our topic today is seesawing in the classroom. Our special guest is Peg Bullock. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. I will turn over the mic to Paula, who will introduce Peg, as well as ask her the newbie question. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us on Classroom 2.0 Live. Um, <clears throat> I am taking over the introduction of Peg Bullock for Peggy George. So it is my great honor to introduce Peg, who is in her 25th year of teaching. She teaches amazing second graders in Bucks County, Sellersville, Pennsylvania. She integrates technology into all subjects, collaborates with others, and is always eager to try the newest tech tools. Her greatest passion is infusing technology so her students are armed with the necessary skills needed for the future. In addition, she is always looking for a way to weave fun into student learning. Peg is a recipient of many grants from Donors Choose, Penridge Community Education Foundation, and IPVO's Wish Pool. She is a Seesaw Ambassador, a Class Dojo Mentor, Clickers Ambassador, Musella Captain, as well as a Choose to Be Nice Ambassador. She hosts Tech Talk with the teachers each month to encourage the teachers in her building to learn and grow from each other. Peg also opens the doors to her classroom early for the Discovery Tech Club each Wednesday morning so the students can have more time learning with robots in the classroom. Her personal interest with robots has enabled her to teach coding to the students at a young age. Seesaw is Peg's all-time favorite app and teaching tool. She has been on board with Seesaw since, it's, since the debut of the app in 2015. Her second graders share a friendship classwork, share friendship classwork and ideas with pen pals in South Dakota via a, class, a Seesaw class. The class has also hosted a global class with six classes from over four continents this fall. So without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Peg, and she will answer the newbie question, what is a student-driven digital portfolio? Well, thank you for that introduction, Paula. It's nice to be here. Um, the newbie question is, what is a student-driven digital portfolio? When I think of digital, I think of the 21st century, the five C's of technology, um, and portfolio, building a show, show place, showcase place to show their learnings. Sorry. So I think of websites. And for a second grade classroom, that's really difficult to build. So when I had my donors choose uh, iPads and grants, and we use our desktops, I was trying all these different sites. And it was really quite difficult to try to get to seeing what every child was doing. So back in January of 2015, it was the birth of what I called seesawing, um, where it kind of rocked our world in education. Yeah, I've been in education for a long enough time to see that the pendulum swings. And uh, it goes back and forth. And we want kids to be engaged and empowered with their learning. But I've also seen how when I was a, a child in second grade, life learning was so different than kids nowadays. The kids learn in so many different ways. You see, years ago, we used to just sit and listen. Back then, we would have VHS tapes, and we would watch a video. Um, not too long ago, we Skyped with Antarctica and was in a penguin colony. Uh, we would do science experiments, and the kids would forget to tell their moms and dads about what they did in science. But now with Seesaw, we can show video clips, and people can see what is happening in that science experiment. Years ago, we hardly had computers in the classroom. This past week, we Skyped with an uh, author and fellow computer science, Paul Hamilton. He's an author in Australia. And we learned about coding. And we do this all and acknowledge it all using this app called Seesaw. 
So today, I want to share with you what Seesaw is. I'm excited that many of you didn't know what it was because it is a great tool. I'm going to show you lots of examples first and give you some examples of how I do it in my classroom and then go through the setup process with you. Seesaw is a phenomenal digital portfolio. It's made and built for the 21st century learners and it is an amazing tool. One that I pretty much can say got rid of all the other apps that I would use because Seesaw does it all. We put kids in a position to thrive and sure enough the kids excel. Um, their parents are thrilled with what they're learning. Seesaw is a collaborative document where they could work with kids, um, post together, share it with both their families. Uh, it is something I use for announcements and all kinds of things. What's great about Seesaw is that it is usable on almost every platform that I can think of. Um, it's great with the iPads that I have in my classroom. I use my phone all the time. We have desktops. So pretty much no matter what, what kind of technology you have in your classroom, you're probably good to go. It is a free app. There is also a paid portion in Seesaw. Um, it's worthwhile, but today we're not going to discuss it. But the kids today versus kids years ago are showing what they know. So I have a great class website. Feel free to browse it. Lots of websites off to the side that you can use. I use it um, daily with my kids. This is the bouncing point. So my kids will go to the Today link, which is at the top of the page. And then they'll go to they'll go to uh, my favorite site, which is Seesaw, and they'll click on it. And what sold me the most was if you teach the younger primary grades, it takes about 15 minutes to get kids to be logged in with Seesaw. They simply click that they're a student, and a Seesaw code is in their hands, and they show it to the screen or the laptop scans it. There's a built-in QR code sign-in. It is phenomenal. When I met the man who um, created it at ISTE in, uh, last year or so, I, that was the best thing. When he created that QR code sign-in, it made life so much easier for the kids. This is what I have in my classroom. On the right, you'll see um, three different classrooms that you can sign in. This is my classroom that I use with my kids. This is my pen pal classroom. It's a QR site. I covered it with our school mascot to keep privacy, of course. And then this is our third one, our global pen pal site that we uh, interacted with students from across the world this past fall. So the kids simply walk up to these QR codes and they scan it. And within 30 seconds, they are put into their classroom. You can have many classes on Seesaw. And so what I did was I put the QR codes on this piece of construction paper so that they could fold it into like a trifold. And they could have, we have six classrooms currently going in our, in my room 11. Um, so our global classroom, they would just scan this QR code. If they wanted to talk to their pen pals, they would have to scan this QR code and so forth. So you can make that QR code portable and leave it at Teams so that the kids have quick access. So what can this digital portfolio do? It can certainly, um, it can showcase all of their learning. It is an online digital portfolio. The kids scan in, and once they scan in, they simply go for this green check, this, I'm sorry, green plus. They're going to simply add an item. There's six choices that they have. And all six, it depends on the child's learning preference. They can use uh, any choice. Then they simply pick their name from a selection of the students in your class. They simply look for this green check again. This green check is their friend. They tell me which subject it is, whether it's reading, writing, math. Again, they look for this green check. And then it's updated. Now, speaking of updates, Seesaw is always updating. That's another reason why I love Seesaw. They listen to um, the feedback that the teachers provide. Uh, if teachers are looking for certain things, we post it, we tweet it out, and they're always looking to improve their site. Just recently, they came out with some drawing tools with some of these preset styles and it, a way for kids to add and type, um, label their work, which I'll show you in a minute. And uh, 
even translations. Another reason why I love Seesaw and why you should use it is because uh, this past week was Computer Science Week in education. Not only does Code.org provide great opportunities to teach kids coding, but Seesaw made really kid-friendly connections for the kids. This week they housed or they hosted webinars and they're now housed on this site. So even though it's after the week, it would be certainly worthwhile. The co-founders of Seesaw were able to share with the kids how they took an app and brought it into an idea. It was a phenomenal experience. The kids participated in this 15-minute webinar or so. Um, they were able to ask questions of the founders, and they, they spoke in language that kids could really relate to. So my kids left this week all excited having that idea of, I want to work with computers in the future. And just as you guessed it, you know it'll probably be part of their job one day. Another reason I love Seesaw is because there's lots of choices. You can personalize it for your class. Um, like I said, you can communicate with parents. It is all private, so if my son or daughter comes home and says that um, I want you to sign up for Seesaw, I would only see my child's work. So the child and the parent and the teacher all communicate and it's very private. Um, I can set settings down here as um, two unapproved items. I like to see what the work is, so I like to have my settings set so that I have to approve the work. I don't want things going out until I approve it. Parents see it immediately, so we could be having a science lesson at 9 o'clock and as soon as that child posts the work and I approve it, the parent can see it. So what's great is that when a child is um, getting off the bus, the parent can ask, hey, what did you do today in school? And they now have lots of good ideas to start a conversation with. Another reason I love Seesaw is because of the choices it provides. Um, with this, this is what the approving looks like. They also have an idea, or they call it, I call it the three magic dots down here. These three magic dots allow you as the teacher to print or get a QR item. You can even copy and save. So all of you who are working towards a paperless classroom, you could take a photocopy, you could take a picture of your printed worksheet that you've used for years. You could use this copy and edit um, button and you could put it into Seesaw. When you put it into Seesaw, the kids can simply click on it and then they can use their drawing tools and they could write your answers in. So this was something that we had done with um, parent helpers and they, this is what we had done with parent helpers and the kids were able to, uh, I'm sorry, my son keeps crawling out here. <laughs> This is something that uh, they had done with the parent helpers and they were able to work with them, talk aloud, and then submit it again. So parents could see that we're working on the differentiation and we are working to improve that skill. So once you get into your classroom, like I said, you can manage your class. You want to make sure certain buttons are turned on. It's really important that kids can see each other work, each other's work so that they can share and collaborate. Like I said, a parent won't see another child's work. Um, you can approve the items and then you can enable editing. And if you wanted to take a photocopy of a worksheet, this would be one of the keys. So we'll look at that when we get into the live screen. So there's lots of reasons why you would love Seesaw. You can take photos and pictures and drawings. You can use a camera roll. The students feel ownership. They feel happy. It's one place to store everything. And the biggest, I think the most exciting thing for a child is that you can see the growth from September through June. It's a great way to practice digital citizenship because the kids can leave appropriate comments if you have that set as an opportunity. And so the kids are happy, the teacher's happy. I can finally now see what the kids are working on on the iPad, whereas before I had a hard time having them finish a project and turn it in. Um, the parents are happy because they get to know what's happening in the classroom. So basically, it's, like I said, the best app. So these are the tools. Um, you can use it for a newsletter, you can use it for testing, you can use it for quick assessments, 
um, or just re regular everyday classwork. Seesaw is free for class. Um, schools can sign up and use these tools. And schools can sign up. They have Seesaw for the school, where the content travels with the student from year to year. Um, but you don't need that piece. I'm just letting you know that that piece exists. So with all the slides that you see, what a child needs to remember is that they want to use this plus sign because they want to add their wow work or their incredible learning to Seesaw. There's six choices. Um, so they choose what they want to add. And then they add it and simply look for this green check. And immediately, they will see success. As a teacher, those you want to remember, but those three magic dots really are powerful because they can do so many things. Like I said, you can copy and edit a worksheet. Then the child can edit that worksheet and fill in um, some ideas and examples depending on what skill you're working on. And here's an example of a number grid kids were working on. So back to the tools. Um, the first tool in the list is the photo. So simply taking a picture of something, this is powerful, it's quick. And then once they do it, they can rotate the picture. Down here, you always have choices. You can add audio, which for my second grade class is great because it's quick. They do it off the top of their head. It's not something that they practice for six days. They just show their immediate learning. So you can see right where they are at that moment, whether they're growing, whether they're having trouble with sounds. Um, the kids can draw and annotate. They can kind of point out, this is the sunset, this is the ocean. Um, they can describe with drawing and arrows. And recently they added, or not recently, but they have the caption where they can type and add sentences to go along with it. For my second graders, towards the end of the year, that's more successful. In the beginning of the year, they kind of choose more audio. So they have lots of choices. Once they finish describing their learning and their thinking, then they look for that green check and they turn it in. So other examples, this is just a picture. We were practicing fact fluency with dominoes. They took a picture, they described it, and they turned in their work and their thinking. In math, once we got done doing this one game, we were looking at it, trying to come up with patterns. And uh, like I said, we have seven iPads. So each, each day, a child has an iPad. And if it's their learning, they're in charge, if it's their day for learning with the iPad, they're in charge of documenting their learning. So this child snapped a picture at the end of the game so that we, he could record the, um, the dominoes and the odd even numbers and looking for patterns. Another thing we did during parent conference time, the kids did a self-evaluation. Um, I had them do it on paper, but I really, now that I'm thinking about it, should have had them copy and edit and just colored in the circles with the drawing tools. But I'm learning just like you. And so this self-evaluation was a way for parents to see how they did as a learner in the quarter. I also had them do a video, and I had them do a selfie. And they said, hi, mom and dad. Welcome to my second grade class. I'm looking forward to, and then they told me what they wanted to learn or what they were having trouble with. So it was a nice introduction for parent conferences. Parents seem to enjoy it. Um, another example of a photo, here's the audio button at the end. So I'm not going to play it right now, but you can hear the kids explaining the four seasons and the audio clip. So my kids are publishing, um, every once in a while I'll publish something to the blog, but I don't do that a ton yet, but they do put it into a portfolio of learning. So this is their social study science. And it's kind of funny because second grade, they're like, now what subject is this? And they still are having trouble with that, but they're getting better. So another way um, to take a photo is I just have a picture of a test, and then I had recorded my spelling words for the 14 words on this test on the left. And then the kids just sat in a quiet corner one day during the week. I said, whenever you're ready to take your test, Here's your spelling paper. Go take it. And some kids were excited to take it early in the week, and some kids wanted to study long. And that choice was really exciting for the kids. They seemed to like it. Um, they were able to take their test. This was another example I had used. Um, I recorded sentences, though, so they had to write the whole sentence. So if you're a classroom where you do differentiated types of tests, here's a possible way that you could do it.
uh, like I said, you can do a photo with the audio. The beauty of um, the three magic dots here, the bottom one is a print button. So this is my, my student who took a picture of his writing. He spoke, he did the audio, and read me his story out loud. And then this right here is the printed copy. What we did was we had printed it out, and Seesaw gives you a QR code where you can access it. So we had um, one time donors choose we had thank you notes to write, and so my kids did a lovely letter. They read it, and then they also had the QR code to send in the mail to the people. So they had the combination. It was a neat little thank you note. So don't forget those three dots because they are um, helpful. So a video, kids, kids are funny at first with the selfies. I myself am funny. Um, but they really enjoy doing the selfie reflection. Once a month, the kids are asked to just go to a quiet corner in the room. And we have to share the iPad, so it takes a couple days. They share what they have learned. And they tell me what they're having trouble with. Um, if something really exciting has gone on at home, sometimes they'll share. And then in September, they were really nervous about sharing. And there were no rules. It was just talk to me. So it's interesting to see what the kids come up with. When you take a video, the choice underneath it is to add a caption. So you can write below it and explain what you would like um, to have at it. This is an example of my homework board. You know, in the beginning of the year, you can write down spelling worksheet or page five. Um, but having the kids explain that to parents sometimes gets a little confusing, especially when you're a new teacher and you have new homework and parents aren't used to your ways or your routines. So I started doing a video of my homework board. And now I'm down to a picture of my homework board just so that they can access it and see it easily. But the video was kind of helpful for the parents in the beginning of the year. I love not having to be able to meet. Um, you know, you have a class of 29 kids, say, and I can't meet with everybody every week, every, you know, all the time. So this has been a great way to help alleviate that. I can have students just go up to our board and read our sight words. They take a picture. They also can do a video, either or. And they simply read their sight words, and then they turn it in. So I can just sit at home, and I can go through the feed, and I can see all these examples and just kind of take my notes from there. One of the great things about Seesaw is that when you post something, it could be instantaneous. We had a sleepover with our stuffed animals a little while ago, and I had made a little puppet, a shadow puppet video. And the kids loved it. And this is the video right up here share, sharing. The custodian got in on the fun, and we had the stuffed animals all over the place. We had taken different pictures. Um, but what I was able to capture is this little clip of just the kids' hysteria when they saw that their stuffed animal was doing something crazy. The kids were rolling and, and really, truly just hysterical that I had taken that clip and sent it to parents. So parents were able to enjoy that excitement as the kids were experience, experience, experiencing it. Um, just so that you know, there is a five minute limit on a video. So it does take longer to upload the longer videos. I always encourage my kids to just give me a short clip, like if they're reading an example um, of a book or a page. So videos are useful. Another tool they have is the drawing tool. This is great on an iPad. It's getting better on a desktop with second graders using the mouse. They, they are improving. Um, but they can draw what they're learning. So we're learning about penguins, and we were in the continent of Antarctica. When they're finished their drawing, they can add an audio. They can add more to the drawing. Or they can add text in sentence form and add a caption. Again, once they are finished with the drawing, they just click this green check. In math class, instead of pulling out the whiteboards when it's their turn on the iPad to be an iPad learner, then they just simply put their math right here on the board, and then they submit it with that green check. So drawing tools are just easy um, for the kids, especially uh, with the touch pads. They have an added text feature where you can add a text tool. This is a nice update. So the kids can now label their drawings. Um, 
in a neater way, and they can spell it out and type it out. So that's terrific. Oftentimes you might save something onto your camera roll or onto your desktop and you might want to upload it for the kids just for a teaching moment. Um, so the upload file is another great tool that Seesaw offers so that you can Seesaw in your classroom. You simply just drag in your file right here, click your green check, and off you go. Um, you can add audio, you can add drawing and other things to it. And then the kids would have, for example, this video, super quick. Um, we had Skyped with Antarctica. Here's Jean Pennycook, my favorite personnel in Antarctica. Uh, and I wasn't able to capture the whole Skype experience, but this is just a little clip. My videotaping skills are a lot to be desired. But I was able to share it on Seesaw so that the child who was absent was able to see uh, what was going on the day that she missed. So I was able to capture a little bit of that moment. Seesaw integrates with other apps. We have um, this is Pick Collage, Shadow Puppet, Chatter Picks. There's a whole bunch of slides or apps where you can do some app smashing, where you can create something over in another app and then upload it into Seesaw. So no matter what you're making, nine times out of ten, it easily integrates with Seesaw, which is great. Again, it's that one place for um, you know keeping all the child learning or that portfolio. Simply, sometimes I just put reminders. When it was Veterans Day, I put a little reminder um, to send to parents. So sometimes just notes and messages are handy. And here's the note. Um, kids can put their wow work. Again, they can read what they wrote, which is helpful, especially for the young kids when their spelling isn't so perfect. They can read it, and then they can uh, click the green check and upload it into their personal file. After we did some research on Pebble Go, the kids wrote about one of their storms, and then they uploaded it to their Seesaw account in the Social Studies Science file. So you can use it in any subject. I think what you need to think about is what do you teach, how am I teaching, and then which one of those six tools would be best. So one day I forgot to take a picture of my homework board, so I did this from home and I just typed a note real quick. Here's an example of a child's writing. Uh, with Seesaw, they can start one day writing on a story. This was a cold write. Our school reads a prompt, and then everybody in the school stop drops and, and writes for a few minutes. Uh, the child wanted to add on to it, so he did upload it the first day. And then the second day, he used this copy and edit under those three magic dots. And the second day, he went back and he added to his story. So it's still not perfect yet, but he still had ideas going. So it's not like you can't go back and fix it. So if a child's working on it on Monday, they can go back to it on the next day. Using Seesaw as a teaching tool, um, handing out assignments through links, sometimes that's really hard, you know, if a child's upload or typing a link that's really long, so they can just simply click on a link. So one of the choices you as a teacher has, or even if a kid finds a great website, they can upload a link themselves. Simply put in the link, and then you can add audio to describe it. Again, down at the bottom, you'll see your choices. Or you can add caption and explain the assignment. A lot of times, I'll just use that as a bouncing point and send them to places. So this was a, to Google Classroom. I'm struggling. Do I want to use Google Classroom? Do I want to use Seesaw? Because both have some benefits. but my friend really is a seesaw. This was a place where um, they could just get there super quickly. This is what they'll see. And the kids just click on that link, and it'll take them to the task that I'm asking. This was fire prevention week. I had kids use Shadow Puppet. We had put all the pictures together, and then they created um, kind of a summary of our fire assembly. And we sent it off to the firemen, of course, and they loved it. Um, but it was an example of app smashing, where we build it in Shadow Puppet, and then they uploaded the link. What you do is you save your project to the camera roll, and then you upload it into Seesaw by using the link. And it works out great. So I had said we're studying penguins, so when we do a nest check, uh, the kids simply just go and hop on Seesaw, and this will take them right to that link. And from home, they can get to it easy also. And then they can just check and follow their nest. 
So Seesaw has a couple different views. This is what it looks like on my screen. I'll get there in just a moment. Um, we have three buttons. The first one here is your feed view, where it kind of reminds me of Facebook, where you're just scrolling through and you see everybody's uh, news and information, whatever they imported that day, whatever they uploaded. Over um, in the middle, you'll have the calendar view. This is handy if you know that you have an assignment due on a certain date and uh, you want to see that everybody turned it in. Uh, if you want to do a quick check in math, a quick, you know, everybody tell me what clock, what does the clock say, upload that. Anybody with an iPad, you can just see it real quick. Uh, it's just another different view. And then the third one over here, you have the blog view. You can turn on the blog, you can turn off the blog. The blog enables you to send certain specific items from Seesaw out publicly to a blog, so it's your classroom blog. Um, this also allows other kids to connect and look to see what your kids are working on. And sometimes um, even students will comment on what the kids are working on. So depending on which uh, view you would like, you'll also see the kids' names down off to the right-hand side. So one of the other ways you can view it is you can view just by looking at a certain student. So I didn't use this so much at conference time, but I could have um, taken all of you know, Carter's work and just said, this is all of Carter's you know, work that he's done since the beginning of the year. You could take it one step further, and right next to Carter's name, once you click on his name, you'll see a little blue folder. And that folder then would allow me to find just his writing or just his reading samples. So you could really focus on uh, just a specific subject. So I keep growing with uh, Seesaw. I have my classroom account, so that's my We Care, that's our school theme. I have my Pen Pal account, where it's just the two Pen Pal teachers, um, yay to Mrs. Duffy's class, who uh, is in South Dakota, and we communicate through, through that. So instead of uh, snail mail, we kind of are doing more with Seesaw. We have John M. Grass Writers, which is our school I'm trying to get off the ground. I have a different class. I have a different folder set up for each grade level. So when we do those cold writes, I'm hoping to add writings. So right now, second grade is participating. We're piloting it. And uh, that my second graders can look to see what other second graders wrote. It's the same prompt, but what story did they tell? Here's Classroom 2.0 Live, so I made one for today so we can show, I can show you some more examples. And then seesawing around the world. This was, I tried to get one representative from every continent, and then each week we had a certain theme. I was hoping to connect with different classrooms all over the world and kind of compare and contrast our class, um, the way we, you know, use technology in the classrooms, uh, kind of the clothing or the food, the money, uh, different landmarks. It was a really neat experience. So we had four continents and we had six classrooms all joined in there. Um, it was the beginning of the year for us here in America, so it was kind of hard. And I would love to do it again. So since hopefully maybe you guys would love to participate and try your seesaw expertise, sometime in the spring I'd love to put together um, another classroom. So if you would like sign up and we'll see what we can't get going. Um, but you're looking at all these examples and you're like, wait a minute, is it that easy? And the answer is absolutely yes, it is that easy. Um, sign up is free and it's easy. You simply go to Seesaw Me. Um, the sign up is free right here. And in about 30 seconds, you can just say, I'm a teacher. You can sign up either way. You can sign up as a teacher with your first name, last name, email, and a password. Or now they have Google Sign Up, you can sign up that way. So either way, you're signed up, and in a matter of two minutes, you're going to see these introductory class slides, and bam, you're done. So once you've signed up, then you get to sign up your class. Signing up your class is just that easy. You can name your class and click that green check button. You can give it a grade level. And then you have a choice, do you want to do sign in with QR code or with an email? Now, if your kids are older and they have email accounts, that might be your choice. But if they're younger or you just want something really easy, I would choose the QR scanner. Don't worry, you can always change this later. And I think that's important to know because at first you probably don't know what you want. 
So when the kids scan and open, you're going to see this QR reader and scan. This has a secret message in the middle right here if you want to get your QR reader and have a little fun. Uh, so the kids could either scan the code, older kids could either enter their email, and they do actually have a way that, like if a child wanted to scan from home and you just wanted to give them a 15-minute code, you could uh, get a text code and it would just enter into your classroom for about 15 minutes and it's just a quick way. When it's time to add your students' names, here's a place to add. It will give them an icon and they're an animal, which they love. Um, there's ways to change that. And then you can also paste in your classroom names. It'll also then prompt you for a print off of the directions and it will give you the QR code. And you can cl click off or print off a QR poster. Don't forget, you don't want this QR um, the QR code hanging in your room in the back of your pictures because you want to keep that private. Um, but it really is just that easy. Seesaw will send you what you need. This is that text code I was talking about. It's only valid for 15 minutes. So it's just a temporary thing. I'm giving you lots of information today. So if you ever need help, Seesaw has an amazing help center. They have help getting started tutoring videos. They also have tutorials. And also down here, they have activities. So there are plenty of places to learn. So I'm going to change and share the screen now. We have, this is my screen. Um, and we're going to take a look at this area here because this has lots of choices when we are live in our classroom. So we can see my screen. And I'm going to go underneath my portfolio here. I have. The first classroom that I have is at the top, but I also have other classrooms. So when you scroll down, I have the John M. Grass Writers, the Pen Pals, the Seesaws. So I can just change from one class to another just by clicking here. But right now, I'm in my classroom 2.0, and it'll give you a place for notifications. And it's telling me that so-and-so wanted to add an item. If a parent made a comment, it will let me know. And it will also give me a place to tap here. So when I look at my live feed, I need to approve two items. And these are the two items. So I'm looking at Olivia's work, and I want to read it real quick. And I simply approve it. So when I say you need to approve it before a parent can see it, it's a matter of seconds. If I want it to, like sometimes you'll have 11 items come in at one time from your whole class, you can just approve all of them down here with this bottom um, green bar. So this is an example of something that maybe I want to use in class next week. So I'm going to approve it, and it will go into the folder. From the screen, you can also add an item. But you also can add an item up here in the upper right-hand corner. That plus sign is the sign that will take you to those choices that you have. So you have six choices. So we have our feed view which is, like I said, it reminds me of Facebook where you just kind of scroll down and you see everybody's thinking. And you can see different examples. This penguin one was one um, I had made a folder for myself for things that I wanted. And then I made a Teach Me folder. And Angela Gatke on the Seesaw, she taught me in one of her professional development webinars that if you put an asterisk in front, it will be the top of the list. That's kind of handy. You might want to remember that. Um, but in the Teach Me folder, I put things that maybe I want to use for class. So when we were having a Padea seminar, we had a picture of Penguin and we had questions. And then we had a discussion about this. So I could put it up on the screen so the kids could see. But also, because it was in Seesaw, the kids could see it right there on their iPads. And again, we don't have enough for everybody, so the kids have to share. Um, so you can just see how the feed looks when it's live. So this is a link that the kids would um, click on. This is just an updated picture. My penguin was named now Chloe and Billy Bob Joe. So the kids will get a kick out of that penguin name. And here's the nest, because I like them to check on the weekend. I would put this up just so that when the kids are on Seesaw, they could pop on the, the website and see. So again, if you just feed them that information, it's nice and easy. The kids can access it. 
This is a picture um, we had taken. This is Silas reading. And so he's just reading a page. And that's all I ask the kids to do once a week is to just pick the page that they're reading, either take a picture or take a video, and then do an, um, a clip of themselves reading. So I can get a fluency check on each of the kids during the week. This is an example of chatter picks where they smashed the app. They took a picture. They made the penguin. And the penguin talks. His mouth moves. So this is your feed view. And that's one of the ones that we just approved. So calendar view. And you can see how every day we added different items to this particular class. Now again, I have lots of different classes, so this was the class we're looking at. Skills view is if you are purchasing and using these for grades. You know, as a teacher, we're looking at all of these assignments, um, but I don't have it set up for this class. It's a way that you can assign a grade to it so that you can easily say, this child has mastered the skill, this child has not. Here's a place you could go for unapproved items. If you didn't print out your class code and you needed it again, it would be here. But this Manage Class is the biggie. So when you click on Manage Class, you have lots of choices. This is where you can change any of your settings. So you set it up, and you um, can make lots of changes. Here's where you can manage your kids. So if I needed to add a new student, I simply add the name down here. I click Add Student, and Harry's added to my list. He's given the icon here, and kids like to change their icons. So simply, you just click on the icon, and you can pick any animal you would like for Harry. And then you can go back and continue with some changes that you need. I can enable or not enable the blog. Again, blogs would be public for everybody. I can also enable or not enable parent access. So let me go back up. I slid down a bit. Um, here's a place where if you want kids to be practicing digital um, citizenship, students' likes and comments, you would want these all turned on so that the kids can comment, so that um, you do look for approval or have approval before they're posted. And the editing button, I would definitely make sure that that button is turned on, because you want kids to go back and have access to add to their story or fix a spelling if they have it. When you scroll down in the Manage class, this folder account is nice. It's nice to keep everything organized. I have lots of them in my main classroom. For this, I just made an Everything Else folder, because that sometimes is like your catch-all. It's not really math. It's not really reading. If you're doing this on like your iPhone or an iPad, you can put a little emoji icon at the end or at the beginning of the word for the file folder. And it kind of gives that graphic, that visual. And I personally have this turned off save to camera roll because the kids tend to take a lot of pictures. They're really excited about all of their learning. And so you're going to fill up really quickly if you keep it to the camera roll. So I have that turned off for sure. But the Manage Classes is where you're going to make those tweaks to make your um, classroom personalized. So it really is that easy. If you're not sure of something, just click on it and you can change things. You can also manage with another teacher if you're co-teaching with someone. That's handy um, if you're in that situation. And then Seesaw allows you to invite parents. It will enable parent access. And if you click here, you'll download letters. It will tell you everything that you need. It's a nice, easy letter for a parent to follow. It gives them a QR code and allows them to get connected. I have most kids in my classroom connected, but not quite everybody. So you just need to remember that the green check is your friend. So let me go back to class view. Woo. Let me go back to Add Item first. So Add Item is this plus sign over here. And you can add any item. So you can take a picture. Hi. And then you simply add with your check. You can add your drawing, your caption, your audio. And then you can simply put it in your folder. I'm going to call it Everything Else. And that's your first Seesaw item. So for a child, it's really very simple. 
Kids in the high school could use phones. They have icons that aren't those little animals. Um, they are, uh, um, it could be their initials, and they can also upload a photo. So I guess this is not, doesn't normally take that long, but I guess because we're on today. Um, so the kids really have no problem using this, and uh, it's just a great site. I mean, I can't say enough about it. It's just so nice to be able to see what they've done and to see it quickly. I love that parents can see what they've done. So let me go back over here and go back to my slides for a moment. Because a digital folder can do so much, you probably have lots of ideas, I'm sure. Just remember for the kids, this screen, they add something, they add the check, and it's in their portfolio. You can digitalize and do lots of app smashing. Here are just a few of the apps that they can combine. So if you're already using ChatterPix, you can simply take it, save it to the camera roll, and upload it on Seesaw. I just love it because I can now see the kids work a whole lot easier. It just really makes, makes a difference. Adding a class is really simple. Um, commenting is really simple. Actually, at the end of the day, when you're tired of um, typing and your hands hurt, uh, you can actually add audio comments now to the comments section for the kids so the kids can hear your voice in a comment. So like I said, the tools are here to help you. They have a great help center. They're very good on feedback. Um, right here, underneath in this middle section, there is the activities for K to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8, and 9 to 12 down at the bottom. Those look like this page right here, where the activity ideas are set up according to subject. And they just get you started. They give you simple ideas, and it's really handy just to get your brain going and say, oh, I could do that in my classroom. There's also a link in the show notes. Seesaw gives you lots of examples. So there's plenty of examples in the show notes if you are stuck or need some more. And uh, connecting with teachers is one of the best ways that I've learned. Um, I follow Seesaw on Twitter. Twitter. There's also the Seesaw Teachers account on Facebook. A lot of people share ideas. It's a great way to learn. One of the best is uh, they have PD, professional development, in your PJs. And there's nothing like you know relaxing on a Saturday morning, watching some of the recordings or some of the live events. Oftentimes, they're just 20 minutes. They know teachers are busy, so they have plenty of um, ideas and suggestions. So look for those. And don't forget to reach out. You can contact me. My Twitter address is here. My email's here. Um, there's just so much to do. So I'll stop there. I'm sure you have a few questions to ask, too. I hope you give it a whirl. Thanks so much, Peg. I did capture a number of questions. Uh, let me capture this one so I don't forget it. I saw a few scrolling. I just yeah. couldn't do both at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely, <laughs> that's understandable. So I'll go back to the top of my list here. Some of what, a few of these have been answered already. Um, you had mentioned mentioned a couple of resources to get grants for equipment. I think one was choose to be nice. Uh, what is choose to be nice? Uh, choose to be nice is not a grant. That is just a um, just a. I choose to be nice. Um, it's an ambassador site. It's just uh -huh. spreading the words and and just helping kids to be nice. So we try to capture. Okay. We have a kind of calendar. See. It's not a grant. Okay, okay. so it's it's more a um, donors a, choose. I've used right. adopt a classroom. Mm -hmm. um, IPVO is another great one. I P E V O. Uh, mm -hmm. IPVO has a wish pool. It's the first of the month. It's a technology company. And mm -hmm. the first of the month, they offer a free item. And you, as a teacher, submit your wish. It's just a little paragraph wow. expressing your need. And you mm -hmm. submit it. And a couple weeks later, they either grant your wish or they say, sorry, not this time. Um, mm -hmm. I received iPad pillows. And 
I've received a laptop cover, not a laptop, uh, an iPad cover with keyboard mm -hmm. and a charger. So IPVO is a neat, a great resource for teachers. It does sound great. Uh, let me go back to my question list here. Um, uh, how many devices do your students have? Uh, how often do they add to their Seesaw portfolio? Ah, that takes some doing. Um, I still keep playing. I have mm -hmm. seven iPads from grants uh, mm -hmm. and two desktops in my classroom. So I have okay. a total of nine devices. If I feel happy or if I feel trustworthy, I sometimes lend out my phone because they can do it there, mm -hmm. depending on mm -hmm. our project. I have a nice size small class. So I have a chart hanging on our wall and it just rotates the kids. So sometimes they're they're nothing. They don't have a device that day. They just use paper, pencil. Sometimes okay. they're an iPad or a desktop. So I just mm -hmm. rotate with the chart. You rotate. Great. Because that question comes up often. What what do you do with limited technology devices in a in a classroom? And that's a, it's a wonderful way to do it. You, um, if you have kids working with small groups, you can just say one mm -hmm. person, document what your group thinks. And the other mm -hmm. great thing is you can have kids brainstorming on a note, and then you can project it right there on the screen in the classroom, and you can now see everybody's brainstorming if you only great. have, you know, a couple devices. It is best when you have more, but it is certainly doable. I mean, I started when I didn't have as many devices, so mm -hmm. it's workable. Okay. Is there speech to text like Siri? Or I just lost the rest of that question. Well, you can speak in it and it will uh -huh. record everything you're saying perfectly. Okay. It's not speech to text like Siri where we'll okay. type it so out. Okay. So it'll it's record you'll, like you'll hear audio. the recording. Okay. Correct. So they they won't it won't type the caption, but they can hear the audio. Okay. Correct. Um what do you do about technology gap between classroom and home? Uh, this is how do you address interfacing with the families who do not have technology access? It seems like while well, using 21st century technology is fantastic on so many levels, it can create a huge gap for those who do not have it at home. How do you close that gap? Um, you certainly have to be mindful of it. When I mm -hmm. send announcements, if it's something mm -hmm. I want everybody in my class, I right. don't communicate always with Seesaw because I don't have everybody connected. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't, you know, require homework. I think it's just a matter of, um, you know, keep working with your district, keep working right. with trying to get grants and trying to bridge that gap yourself. Um, parents a lot of times will get on board. I've had parents say I had to delete some of the apps so that I could put Seesaw <laughs> on because mm -hmm. Seesaw is so great and mm -hmm. I get to see what my child's doing. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's that's really wonderful. Um, that, 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 that still will, is a problem. But, well, yeah. yeah, but if parents will get rid of apps on their own just to get to be able to put Seesaw back on. That, that's Correct. Great. That is great. Um, let's see. I do have others here. Uh, this teacher was concerned of potential mischief. I was unsure about use with older kids, depending on the kids, but because they log in and they have access to everyone's work. Is that a problem? Do, do students sometimes sabotage others' work? Uh, well, I speak from a second grade point of view, so right. in my case, no. Um, no, they can good. view other people's works. Mm -hmm. um, you might want to turn off that setting if you don't trust them. If mm -hmm. you know they're older, high school, I could see the potential there. Right. Okay. Um, I my kids are just so excited. Oh wow! Look what you know Nikki did. Look what right. Carter did. Right. Right. They're they're not and, interested in changing it. But okay. I think I can see that happening at an older grade. Right. Sure. Okay. It may take experimentation I guess, with older students. And I think that also speaks to digital citizenship right, and absolutely. teaching the kids how to, uh, right. you know, appropriately respond and be sure. respectful. And yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's see. Uh, now this teacher is asking about the 
access. So the QR access for uh, an iPad or some some device, and then the web code the, on the web, a temporary code, the 15-minute code. Is that correct? It is a 15 minute code. I really have not used it often. I had a kid contact me from home via email saying, oh, Mrs. Volek, I wanted to post this. Uh -huh. So I sent oh, him I the text code. Mm -hmm. He posted it within that 15 minutes and then the next day at school he could share. Oh, okay. Okay. So he he had made a video for science and he wanted to share it with his classmates and I mm -hmm. thought that was a, you know, a great way to, to share. So right. I haven't yet sent home that QR code so that kids could have access to it all, to, all the time because right. I didn't want it's, too it's much request. in that portfolio. Sure. I right. wanted it to be like that wow work, that good Oh, sure. Stuff. That's great. Um, if I teach students in different grade levels, would I put them all in one class or would they set up different classes? Uh, there's more to that and my chat scrolled. Uh, let me see if I can find it again. Yeah, it's, I guess it depends on what you're, if it's the same subject, if they're, I don't know, I think I would do it separate grade levels. Yeah, I think I would too. I, I think that would be my first, I mean, not knowing what you teach, but that's right. what experimenting is, and if you don't like it, you can always archive that class, mm -hmm. go to the manage settings, archive that class, and start a new one. It's simple enough to start a new class, so you right. know, try it for the next quarter, and if you don't like it, then um, just make adjustments you know. along the way. Yeah, yeah it, oh. it can change. Right. Also, if they are in another teacher's class, can they also be in mine? So can a student be in more than one Seesaw class? I, yes, they would log into Mrs. Jones's class and mm -hmm. then they would log in, unless those teachers shared a class. Okay. Um, they might have to log in two different times depending on who the teacher is. Right. How do you handle the kids who do not have permission to be connected? Or do you have any of them? Um, I have a few that aren't connected with parents, but right. they're all, they all have permission to be connected. So Okay. Okay. So within the classroom, kind of, yeah, it, within they, the, they need to be connected. Yeah. It, it's, in, it, it's within the classroom, and mm -hmm. it's at that safe zone. I wouldn't right. do the blog then. Right. Sure. In that case. Sure. Is there a Twitter hashtag that Seesaw teachers are using to share examples? Uh, I would imagine it's just hashtag Seesaw. Okay. Um, I don't know. Oh, let's see. Some some teacher noticed the Google Classroom on your Symbaloo page. How are you using Google Classroom with your second grade? Uh, or not? I use it. No, well, it's. The first half of the year, I feel like in second grade there's two halves of the year. The mm -hmm. first half of the year I'm just trying to get them into technology and how to right. use it. The second half of the year I can enable them. For right now, um, I've taught them how to use drawing tools on Google, Google okay. Classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that with fifth grade buddies. They mm -hmm. haven't written or shared text and stories. We've just done mm -hmm. that on Seesaw so far. But okay. in Google Classroom, if I wanted them to um, brainstorm a list or uh, edit in the future, we will do all that. Mm -hmm. So I put videos. They like to watch the videos. I can also do that on Seesaw. So mm -hmm. I, for the beginning of the year, Seesaw is the, the better tool. Mm -hmm. But right. as they get more advanced, because I want to get them ready for third grade, I teach them more of the Google Classroom. Sure. So sure. Now, we're actually, in it, but we're not in it all the time. Sure. Like Seesaw. Right. Okay. I think those are the questions I was able to capture during the presentation, during Peg's presentation. I know there are experienced seesaw, seesawers here in the session today. Um, well, Barbara, there is a, I am recording this. This session is being recorded. You can go and, and access the recording later, so you can catch up. Uh, does anyone who has had experience using Seesaw, like to share on the mic. We can do that now. If not, that's OK, too. <laughs> a 
Peggy's trying to nudge Jacob. And so is Peg. <laughs> He's thinking about Come it. Go on, Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> if I can do this, you can do it, Jacob. <laughs> Just let us know how Seesaw is working in your classroom. I'm trying to find Jacob's name. Uh, uh, huh, interesting. Jacob is saying that he doesn't use Seesaw right now in his current classroom, so he's a little shocked. Oh, OK. I'm not sure how he logged in, so I can't find him. And Wes is saying, yes, but you were an expert last year, Jacob. Oh, Jacob's with Liz. I see. OK. OK. Paula. Paula Noggle. I didn't <laughs> see your hand there. Sorry, Paula. Go ahead. That's quite all right. Yes, we'd love to hear from Jacob, but if he's shy, we understand that also. Uh, Peg, that is one of the things that I struggle with as a blended learning teacher. I do lots of tech integration with my classroom. And then they move out of my fourth grade classroom and go on to the next grade level where things don't happen quite the same way, mostly because I've written Donors Choose grants to have the devices in my room and not everybody else has done that. So what Correct. do you feel, yeah, what happens, <clears throat> like, what do you hear back from the kids, the parents, et cetera, when they no longer have access to something as wonderful as Seesaw? Um, they all simply want to come back to second grade. They don't want to grow up. <laughs> Uh, I've had kids come back and they've been in my classroom and they're like, well, you didn't do this when we were in here. And I'm like, that's because I keep learning just like, you know, you are. So I've had uh, I, the kids who are in my third grade class, who are in third grade now, you know, they just come back and look like, oh, we don't do that. Or sometimes we do it, but not as much. And it is much harder when you don't have the devices. And I mean, absolutely, those teachers have to go, they have to sign out the devices, and then they have to, um, you know, use them at a certain time for a certain thing. It, it is just difficult. I don't have a good answer for that, because it's hard. Sure. I think Wes would like to share. He had his hand raised. Wes. Go ahead. Just a quick question, Liz. Great presentation. So awesome. I was wondering if you could comment a little bit on the blogging feature and if you've played with other, you know, blogging tools for your second graders and, and just um, what your thoughts are as far as uh, wanting kids to share outside the classroom as well as the inside sharing that they do in Seesaw. Uh, well, Wes, I used to use um, like Kid Blog a few years back. Um, I kind of got out of that, and the Seesaw, my note feature is considered their blog, like when they write to me. Um, and they're just starting to finally get into that, like I'm asking that now that it's the second quarter to write to me, because in the beginning just navigating was difficult. So uh, I think I'm a little hesitant on the blogging feature because it is so public and out there, and I'm not sure everybody is totally on board with being that public. Um, that I don't really, I don't really encourage that much. I hesitate with that. I think, um, but all, everybody in my classroom is loving Seesaw because it's just us. It's our community. But to be honest, I'm not sure how the blog features. It, we're just coming into that uh, realm where we can show pictures on the you know the public newspaper that we have the the weekly newsletter and um, it, it's just I feel like we're a little bit behind in that but I understand safety is a concern and so I guess that's why I haven't played with it too much really and that's quite logical to do it that way yes a great advice and also, as an, an example, to start slowly, communicate within the classroom where it's it's safe, safe environment. Yeah. Right. It was just a few years back where we weren't allowed to put pictures on our website. So right. To have a picture on a website to me is like huge. I yeah, mean, that's a big deal. That's so that's that's pretty. Just baby steps is what I'm. Um, oh sure. Yeah. That's understandable. Well, those were all the questions that I managed to capture, as well as a couple other comments. Yes. Plenty of virtual applause for Peg. 
Uh, thanks so much for presenting for us today. <laughs> Virtual <And applause. laughs> That's fine. Yes, thanks so much. We're going to go and wrap up the show since we are past the time. Yeah, I knew I could talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Just make sure you pass along the word. Seesaw is just a great tool so that teachers can use it. It's phenomenal. Yes, yes. Uh, Anna, the, the recording will be available later on today that you can go back and pause and, and, and re, re view what happened. The upcoming shows are here on this slide. December 17th, Valerie Lewis will be our featured teacher. December 24th and 31st, there are no shows because of our winter break for Christmas and New Year's in the U.S. And January 7th is our eighth annual celebration of Classroom 2.0 Live, where the 2016 presenters and participants will be invited back for a end of year review. Steve Hargadon's latest is the Learning Revolution Project. Uh, besides PD, he's got the Host Your Own Webinar, where you can sign up for a Classroom 2.0, or not a Classroom 2.0, Blackboard Collaborate session for free as long as you make your session public. You can nominate a featured teacher by filling out the form or you can nominate yourself for the featured teacher of the month as well as within the resources at the live binder. You can find that form. As you exit, the survey should open and you can also get the survey from other places including the direct link, uh, the chat box or the log or the live binder. As you complete the survey, you'll be asked if you want a professional development certificate. This now prints out your name, thanks to Patty Rothing. She sends them out. Uh, and make sure this goes to a personal email and not a school address, because schools tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks again to Peg Volak, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today, thanks so much for coming. <laughs>